Okay, this video is going to show uh, show you how to quickly uh, diagnose a hard or no start situation on a Ford Power Stroke diesel. Uh, today I'm working on my 6.0 liter. Um, a lot of the same uh, techniques and principles uh, apply to the other uh, other models as well. Um, first thing you're going to want if you're uh, if you've got a Power Stroke diesel is some way to monitor your sensors. Um, this can be done for as cheap as twenty dollars. Uh, my preferred method is a cheap $10 eBay OBD dongle uh, with my Android phone running the Torque Pro app off the Play Store. Uh, dongle is $10, the Torque Pro app is $5, and you can monitor all the sensors in your truck on a neat little graphical user interface. Uh, a lot of people like the Scan Gauge 2, it's about $160. Uh, basically, uh, in cab, permanently mounted uh, gauge setup lets you monitor all the same sensors. Uh, what you're looking at here is Auto Ingenuity running on my laptop. Basically does the same thing monitoring all the sensors, but if you have the ProLine connector, uh, you can also uh, actuate various valves like your RPR, fuel injector, turbo VGT. Um, you can actually turn those off and on with two-way communication. Um, and you can also run a power balance test to see how, um, how the health of your injectors. Um, so if you've got a uh, hard or no start situation, uh, first thing you want to check is your oil. Make sure you don't have uh, too much oil, which might indicate that one of your uh, injectors is leaking oil or leaking fuel into the oil. Uh, too little oil. Uh, you don't have oil in the system, you're not going to be able to develop the pressure needed to fire the injectors. Um, there's a, a fuel shut off button down there if you got into an accident. Um, the truck actually turns off uh, fuel to the system. Check to make sure that's not pressed. Um, but most of the time when this happens it's some sort of a high pressure oil problem. There's a few things you're going to want to monitor. Um, i got injector control pressure regulator, that's your IPR duty cycle. Right now uh, I'm a key on, engine off, and it's going to sit around 14.8. Um, during a full crank it'll go up to 85. Injector control pressure, PSI, that's your actual high pressure oil uh, pressure. Engine RPM, that's mainly going to apply to you 7.3 liter guys. Um, a lot of times you'll have a bad CPS, and you'll be seeing a uh, less than 100 RPMs or you'll, you'll have a, an erratic RPM reading meaning you need to replace your uh, CPS. Uh, not as common of a problem on the later models. Got my uh, main battery voltage. FICM main power, that's your fuel injector control module uh, main power. That's the actual voltage that it's amplifying and sending to the fuel injectors. You're looking for uh, 4950 volts there. Fuel pulse width, uh, I mainly got that on there to show me when it's actually trying to fire the fuel injectors. Once you get up to about 500 PSI uh, ICP pressure and 100 RPMs, the FICM will actually send power to the fuel injectors. So once I start seeing a number there, I know that the FICM is trying to fire the injectors. My situation is a hot no start situation. So I'm also monitoring my engine coolant temperature and engine oil temperature there. And uh, I'll go ahead and crank it for you guys. Looking for that ICP pressure to increase pretty rapidly. It actually took way too long. It should happen. This should go up to you know, within 500 psi within like two cranks. Um, so if you're getting, um, if your IPR percent is going up to 85, and this pressure here, you know, gets up to like say 100, 200, 300, and just sits there, it's indicating that you need to check your IPR valve or you have a high pressure oil leak. If you're not getting any psi at all, like I was right in the beginning. Um, that's actually because I have air in the system. But if you're not getting any ICP at all, you're going to want to try to unplug your ICP sensor. 
Um, that'll send a default value to the the computer, so it'll try to fire without sensing the actual ICP pressure. Um, that'll tell you that you have a bad ICP, or um, if that doesn't solve it, you might have a bad high pressure oil pump. So we'll go ahead and uh, walk through the diagnosing procedures here. Um, if you weren't getting uh, 50 volts there, or at least uh, I think 47.5 is the minimum you want to see here while cranking. Um, if you're not getting that much voltage on your FICM, um, you might have a bad uh, FICM. You can get them uh, fixed to be better than a brand new one. Uh, there's a couple places online that'll do it for uh, you know less than the cost of a new one. Um, they'll be better than they were before. Um, but if you're not getting that 500 PSI there, you're looking at diagnosing a high pressure oil problem. We'll go outside. <clears throat> Easiest thing to do is to pull out your IPR valve and check it. You're checking that screen. A lot of times they'll be torn. Um, if you have the wrong uh, oil filter cap there, um, it could be bypassing the filter altogether and then that screen there is going to be your main filter and uh, those will cave in pretty easily. On the 7.3 you can pull this out and actually take it apart and service it and if you do that, um, if you've taken one of those apart you know that there's just a tiny little needle valve in there and uh, pretty much all the oil going to your injectors is going through that little needle valve so it's really important to have a good filter, the right oil cap and uh, a good screen on there. So you 7.3 liter guys, you can take them apart and service them. Um, as far as I know, on the 6.0, you can't really take this thing apart and, and service it. To pull it out, you're going to want an IPR socket. Um, you can also make one, but you know they're only like 20 bucks online. Uh, go ahead and order one and keep, keep one of these and extra IPR in your truck at all times. I already pulled mine out. My screen was good. My O-rings were good and I had the same symptoms when I put this new one in there so I went ahead and put my old one back in pulled this back out it's actually way in the back there you pull uh, pull your degas bottle to the side um, pull off your FICM and you can get to it with a socket and like an extension with a wobble or a swivel joint on it um, that's the first thing you want to check um, second thing uh, if your IPR tests out good, then you're looking at a high pressure oil leak. You're going to come over to here to your IPR or your ICP sensor. You can try unplugging it first, see if your truck will start. You want to look down into the connector, see if there's oil in there. If there's oil in there, it means it's uh, blown and uh, it definitely needs to be replaced. Take your uh, 15 16th uh, wrench there or socket. Pull that guy out. It's your ICP. And what I've got here is your basic uh, air duster that I got at Walmart. Cheap kit. Don't use that. Get a standard 1 8 inch grease gun fitting whip. Uh, I think they sell those at Walmart too. And this is the main adapter you need there. It's a, I believe, an M12 by uh, 1.5. It's actually the same exact adapter that you would use to connect a gauge to your uh, your fuel pressure rail. Um, so, if you got one of those, you can just use that adapter as a for the time being. You're gonna take this. Screw it down in there. Doing this one handed here. Get it kind of snug. Alright, so now I've got the ability to feed shop air 
into my ICP pressure port. So next step is you need to command your IPR valve close. You can do that either by feeding it 12 volts directly from the battery um, or with auto ingenuity you can actually actuate it. Last time I did this, I uh, I made a made a connector using hot glue and a couple uh, like PC DIN connectors. Uh, I just put some grease down into the IPR fitting, put the connectors on there, and filled it with hot glue. Um, the 7.3 liter injector harness is the same. The 6.0 uh, VGT harness is the same. Um, can use any one of those connectors and some alligator clips and you just uh, feed 12 volts directly to the IPR valve. You want to limit it to maybe 10-15 minutes at a time. But if you have auto ingenuity, you just come down here, set it to 90 there, and you just click that. I'm now uh, actuating my IPR valve. <clears throat> and you're basically going to turn on your shop air and listen, uh, see if you can listen or hear for leaks anywhere. You're listening at the left valve cover, the right valve cover, and if you can, back uh, by the high pressure oil pump. Um, a lot of times a hot no start situation will be a failed STC fitting. Um, it's pretty common. I've already replaced my STC fitting with the updated part. Um, there's also an O-ring that goes between the block and the high pressure oil pump. I don't think those fail as often, but that's a potential leak point. Um, then under each of the valve, there it goes. As soon as the air got through the oil system there and uh, found the leak, it's now leaking very obviously out of my left valve cover. And uh, this is actually my brand new uh, Blackwater reconditioned engine and uh, it's got uh, either bad rings or bad cylinder walls. I never buy a Blackwater engine, they are not very good at what they do. I'm fighting with them right now to get a new uh, new long block. But basically uh, you can see there I've got a leak in my left valve cover somewhere under my left valve cover. Under the valve covers you have your injector o-rings, you've got um, your oil rail to the top of the injector seals, um, you've got your uh, stand pipes and your dummy plugs. Um, there's an updated dummy plug and standpipe kit that has a beefier o-ring and a Teflon washer behind the o-ring. Um, if you haven't done that update, it could very well be a blown dummy plug o-ring. Um, since I've already updated all my parts, uh, it could be an injector o-ring or um, could be that my oil rail is loosened up a little bit. But at least now I know that I'm going to start with my left valve cover and I'm not um, just pulling you know, my whole top of my engine apart just to find a leak. Um, if you don't hear it on this side, you can pull your boot off over there, um, see if you can hear it through the, the CV or the, uh, the filter boot thing. Um, if you don't hear it there, you might be looking at pulling your turbo and pulling the high pressure oil pump cover off. If you are getting 500 uh, PSI on your ICP and you're getting at least 100 RPMs, uh, it might be a fuel related issue. You're going to pull off your uh, secondary fuel filter lid there and you're going to have someone crank it um, while you uh, watch and make sure it's filling up with fuel and if you're getting air bubbles it means you have a bad injector o-ring or it could be, uh, could be one of your uh, fuel rail lines there. I've got the updated uh, banjo bolt on mine. But that's about it, you know, uh, no start on, on these power strokes is generally a high pressure oil.